Good afternoon. Uh, it's a privilege to be here at this uh, Finnish uh, party. As you might see, I'm even wearing the same clothes as in the movie, um, but not for particular reasons. Uh, yeah, I've been on a fact-finding mission during the last couple of months, and I would like to share some of the basic insights with you. I don't have definite answers, but perhaps some, let's say, insights that might be of interest to you. So, my talk is about three things, about what is going on globally in terms of the, the global green economy, uh, how fast is it going, and then secondly, what is the role of Finland in this emerging economy, and then I would like to focus on how can we, let's say, accelerate the transition to a green economy in Finland? Okay. Um, the talk basically is about opportunities. Uh, as I mentioned, three basic sources. My first preliminary transition analysis, the fact-finding mission, and some interviews with about 40 key players in the Finnish green economy. Okay. Um, what are we talking about? I'm trying to interconnect some of the building's blocks. Somebody translated the Finnish this morning for me, so I think I'm really uh, well informed. Um, what I mentioned, what I, what I noticed was that there is a kind of a diversity of opinions about what the green economy means. Well, I'm not following the OECD definition here. I'm following, let's say, the most stringent definition. A green economy involves three pillars. First of all, clean and safe. That means CO2 poor or CO2 free. So everything that we produce and consume should be clean and safe. Secondly, circular. That means that we leave the linear pattern and that we are going to use all the waste and recycle, upcycling it. And third, bio-based. So here you see already the first misconception. The green economy is not the same as the bio-based economy and it's not the same as the clean tech. I noticed that in this morning there was a lot of focus on clean tech, but the green economy is more than clean tech. It goes beyond technology, it goes beyond technological innovation. So it is a major part of the green economy. What you see here is other things that are at least as important. We are also talking about sustainable lifestyles, we are talking about cultural changes, we are talking about social innovation, new institutions. So in the rest of my talk, I talk about the hardware and the software. And in my view, the hardware is at least as important as the software. Or the other way around. But don't forget the software. That's my first message. Secondly, what is happening uh, all over the world is quite spectacular. This is booming business. Here I present some figures about the hardware. The clean tech industry actually it's the fastest growing industry in the world. It grows by 30% a year for already the fifth year now. In the midst of a crisis, we are facing a systems crisis and we see this implosion of clean tech activities all over the world. China is leading. Germany is one of the leaders. United States, look at Italy. Finland, I couldn't really figure out what the investments were, nor at the private, nor at the public level. So please help me out the coming period because I would like to have the accurate figures. Secondly, you may ask yourself, what is the position in Finland? In many countries, there's a real high esteem of Finland. You are considered as the ultimate champion of innovation. But innovation is something different than, let's say, the kind of radical innovation that underlies the transition to a green economy. So if you look at this picture, and this gives the, let's say, development and growth rates of clean tech, then you see the absolute front runners, China, United States, Germany and Japan, and you see the position of Finland, that's in the pack. And we have higher expectations from you, to be frank. You should be among the front runners. And um, I'm going to sketch some building blocks for Finland to become one of the front runners. That's very important to realize. But look at the position of the Netherlands. That's also not very flourishing. So there's a lot to be gained in my own country as well, to be frank. Um, it's also a job generator. Last week there appeared a highly interesting report. I would like to advise you to download it from the internet. There were about six UN constituencies underpinning the report on the way to Rio plus 20. It's about the relation of the green economy and the new jobs. And what you see is that we expect about 60 million green jobs 
for the next couple of years. And look at these fields in the field of sustainable energy, biomass, construction. So there's a whole range of fields, and not only in the Western world, but also in the developing countries, where this is going to get high. Look at the European picture. That is uh, much more diverse. We expect 22 million of Europeans to be involved in potents. By now, the green jobs represent about 1 to 3 percent of total employment. That varies from country to country. In about eight years from now, we expect it to be between 5 and 10 percent of total unemployment. 5 and 10 percent. That is not a niche anymore. Look at Germany, absolute frontrunner. The German National Bank is pumping more than 100 uh, billion euros in sustainable energy. Look at the UK, 5 percent growth over the last year. One million green jobs already in the UK. That mounts up to about 152 billion euro. But Finland, how many green jobs are there in Finland? I couldn't find it. I couldn't figure out. So please help me again, because you need to accurately monitor your own transition, I think. That's a kind of prerequisite to become one of the front runners. Here you see another picture, and that is uh, the relation between the amount of national public expenses in research and development horizontally and vertically let's say, the growth in clean tech production. And again, you see in the blue area, these are the front-running uh, countries and, and the pack, and you see Finland is underachieving. I don't present it here, but if you, uh, let's say, divide the clean tech growth uh, by GDP, then Finland scores higher, then it's in the top 10 of countries. But anyway, um, I think we are entering an economic battlefield. And the new CEO of Unilever, Paul Polman, he's a Dutch guy. He said it very boldly. He said every kind of company that is not investing at the core in sustainable development is out of the economic competition in the next 10, 15 years. He also said something interesting that uh, consumers all over the world can put a lot of pressure on these companies and within a few weeks they can destroy virtually every kind of company if appears that they are producing unsustainably. So in the next decade, there will be more and more pressure directly and indirectly from consumers onto companies in order to follow that trajectory to the sustainable economy. The second uh, part of my talk is about Finland and the green uh, economy. Uh, I tried to mimic it in a very simplified way using the transition curve. Usually in transition, that is a real fundamental change in the way we think, the way we organize ourselves, and the way we implement things. And it takes about two generations, let's say 30, 40, 50 years. My personal estimate is that Finland is still in the pre-development phase of that transition. And the time is ripe for, let's say, achieving the take-off phase, the, the, the tipping point phase. And um, I also interviewed these people and I asked, who are the leaders then? Do they come from business or government or citizens? And you need to help me, but this, this is a rather controversial picture, I believe. Most people thought that the business pioneers were in the lead, then the government, and then the citizens. It was very hard for me to believe. Is there a general lack of, let's say, public support for this green transition? If I've seen all the SMSs and uh, the tweets this morning, I can hardly believe that, but you, it, it will come back in the panel discussions we have. But in order to further such a transition to a green economy, you need public support. And in other European countries, there is a more broader support for that. It's absolutely crucial. But one of my messages is, like I said already, you need to monitor your own transition process. Where are you in the States? And there is, uh, let's say, an enormous requirement for accurate data in order to monitor this. I'm going to present some of the major barriers that I found and some of the major opportunities. Of course, starting with the barriers, uh, I learned a lot about uh, Finland uh, and many people talked about these silos. I, I don't think I need to explain that to you, but apparently Finland is also packed with silos that is, well, let's say, standalone operating segments in society. That used to be a strength, but in order to achieve this transition, it's more and more a hindrance. There seems to be lack of cooperation between parties involved, also as a result of that siloing. 
and there is a lack of a coherent strategy. I'm not saying that there is a lack of strategy, but there are perhaps multiple strategies or too many, but there's a lack of coherence. There's an implementation problem, it seems, from idea, project, to implementing it, and a lack of transformative capacity of traditional industries, with a question mark, perhaps. So what is the resilience of the traditional economic sectors in Finland, like energy or mining or forestry? How transformative is their capacity in order to adjust themselves to this transition? Because it came up in the early morning discussions, a transition is pushed very much by two elements. The front runners, who are in for radical innovation and radical uh, change, but also the PEC, let's say, the more traditional industries. Um, but you need both. So concluding, a major barrier for Finland is that there is no shared vision on what the green economy means for Finland. It's even worse, there is no unifying picture, there is no, let's say, grand idea or picture or what Finland means for the green economy and what the green economy means for Finland. There's also no roadmap. If I use roadmap, I'll explain that later. I'm not, I'm not uh, talking about a blueprint or a one way, but let's say a multiple uh, roadmap consisting of transition pathways. And so far, the focus has been primarily on incremental innovation. I think Finland is the champion of incremental innovation. However, a transition is characterized by both incremental innovation and radical innovation. And you seem to be, well, have more difficulties with radically innovate than with incrementally innovate, for good reasons. What are the major opportunities? Well, to list a few. Uh, in a certain sense, you are perfectly suited for this transition. There's a strong market orientation, a strong technological orientation. These are all strengths. The interconnectivity between industry, government, education, and NGOs is better than anywhere else in Europe. I've never seen such a high level of cooperation at such a high level. Nobody can, um, can beat you there. There's a lot of bottom-up power, and we heard already uh, about it this morning, and there also is a lot of innovation breeding ground. My point is, later on to be made, is there enough innovation breeding ground for radical innovation? My answer is not yet. So in a certain sense, there is an ideal starting point for Finland. Look at the crucial sectors for the hardware and the software. There is an enormous amount of biomass production. There is chemical industry and water management also as emerging in that transition. There's a lot of energy production, although you can question about what the sources are, but that's a different topic. Forestry I mentioned, but look at this one, the software, the green ICT and engineering, that's one of the emerging booming areas that I expect and there's a high level of knowledge intensity. So, conclusion of this part, Finland has a unique potential, but does not really utilize this potential in 100%. And um, how to make the step from utilizing this potential to implementing this for the green transition? Well, that's my last block. Of course, I don't have the definite answers, but based on my experience in lots of these processes, I will provide you with some building blocks, some elements that could provide a way to the green finish transition. First of all, it's very important that in Finland, we will develop a shared vision of what the Finnish green economy means. It's not the idea that the government will be organizing that, that is, uh, let's say, a misconception, but that all relevant societal actors are involved. I'm extremely positive about the commitments that are being made, but the point is, the commitments need to be, let's say, worked through in the sense that we have a more concrete idea about the future of the Finnish green economy. For instance, a provocative statement is, what is your ambition level? Is Finland ready to become the number one partner for the green economy? I've seen some documents in which it is stated that uh, Finland should be leading in the green economy. Well, you can forget about it because there are so many competitors that are already further on their way. So you need to do it in a, in a much smarter way, I think. Number one partnership could be important. You seem to be a very reliable, innovative partner. You can profit from that. So if you can 
facilitate and stimulate other countries that are paving the way to the green economy. That could be an important role. The second building block is from vision to action. There you need both. I found that in the history of Finland during the last decades, there have been an enormous focus on bottom-up developments. And that leads to niches, uh, incentives for developing niches and pilot projects. But that's all towards incremental innovation. But radical innovation is also a matter of planning. Not an Eastern European kind of deterministic planning, but more a subtle, smart planning that is about learning, searching and experimenting. That's the core of transition management, learning, searching and experimenting. So are we planning enough variety of radical experiments, for instance? And who are the real front runners in these pilots? So that, that means that you need to think in the longer term and also trace that backwards to the shorter term. So in a somewhat mechanistic way, this is my picture. Look at Finland now and Finland in about 20 years from now. In a more or less arbitrary manner, I sketch some of the perhaps important pillars of the future. Renewable energy, biorefinery, smart cities and green services. And then you need to work on, let's say, the transition pathways from here to the future, but also backwards. It's about forecasting and back casting simultaneously. So you need to define a portfolio of experiments for radical innovation, learn from that and see to what extent you can scale up the most successful of these experiments along the lines of the transition pathway. Well, there's a whole lot of research going on also in Finland about how to learn from these radical experiments in these niches. So you need both incremental innovation pathways and radical innovation pathway. And I think the latter is pretty new in Finland that you make that part of a longer term transition uh, route. So with incremental routes, I mean that you are using more efficiently your natural resources, but with radical routes, I mean that you are making new products in an entirely different way, for instance, by using biorefining and fossil fuel free. So the one is more about optimization and the other is more about, let's say, doing things in an entirely different way. And you need both. Pilot projects, well, to give you a list of ideas that came out of the interviews here, uh, the idea is set out experiments, learn from it uh, in a very informed way. For, for instance, not only nanotechnology and uh, smart grids and smart cities. I think that's a highly interesting topic in Finland, but also about green services, green food, about mobile transport service. I personally think that this is one of the most, well, let's say, uh, potential areas for Finland to earn money with, green services, the software, greening your services industry. To take an example for the forestry sector, okay, you can say we, we spend a lot of time on bioenergy, but I, I consider that as a starter in terms of presenting a menu. The real thing is about biorefinering, that's the main dish, and then biospots. That means, let's say, the living labs. Can you organize these radical experiments with citizens, with other stakeholders? And I know that there are quite a few of these living labs already around in Finland, but not particularly related to the green economy for these new areas that I sketched. It also requires new coalitions. That means not only the elephants and the regime players, they are important, but also the niche players. So I understand there are a lot of people from SMEs here, small, medium companies. The small and medium companies, they drive the transition in the first pre-development phase. So if you talk about growth and degrowth, you need to nuance the discussion. I heard about it this morning. But you can never achieve a transition without any growth. That's nonsense. In the first phases of a transition, you need a lot of growth, green growth, based on the elements that I sketched, in particular in these niches with these radical experiments. Without any growth path for these radical experiments, there's no way that you can accelerate the transition. In other sectors, you need different kind of growth. I agree with that, but you need to nuance that. You need cross-sectoral, um, let's say, uh, uh, all kind of unthought coalitions between paper industry, agri-food, diary, chemical, what have you, and also societal coalitions in the most broad sense. Engaging consumers is very important. 
if you look at the green economy and the transition and also for clean tech, there's no way that we can achieve this without actively engaging consumers. This is not only about, let's say, technology push. At the end of the day, the consumers will define what kind of green products and services will become a success and which not. I'm finalizing with a couple of minutes, don't worry. Yeah, uh, financial incentives, you need to be clear about that. These niches and radical experiments need to be stimulated financially. And taxation, that appears from all kinds of experiments I've been engaged in, is a crucial role. On the one hand, taxing the old regime, fossil resources, and on the other hand, detaxing or favoring green resources. The government has here a new role. The government is not the director, is not the main organizer, but creates space for other societal actors that they can play their own role. So I, I mentioned the government more a facilitator than a director. So that means a couple of things. Removing barriers, because there are still many barriers in the current systems to prevent the green transition. Creating innovation space, in particular for the radical innovation. Forming new unthought coalition, also Schumpeterian, uh, creative destruction, and facilitate that planning process without stepping onto the toes of the actors involved. Okay, to round off. Conclusion. First of all, I've tried to show that the green economy is booming worldwide, and uh, it's a matter of hooking on to that new economy or not. This is not only about saving the planet, how important that is, but this is about, are we part of that new green economy or not? And the next couple of years will be of crucial importance for that. Clean tech within that is the fastest growing industry in the world. I consider that to be the case for the next 10 years. In potence, Finland is perfectly equipped, but it underutilizes its potential. So there is a lot of work to be done in order to become one of the front runners. That requires two things, top down and bottom up simultaneously. But it also, that's perhaps the most important message, it also contains and requires leadership and courage. And do we have the courage and enough leadership in Finland, from the business sectors, from the government, from the citizens, in order to make this happen? I hope so. Thank you very much.